boxing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing camouflage, and officially weighing 153 and one half pounds. His professional record stands at 45 victories, including 29 knockouts with only three defeats. From Monroe, Michigan, here is the IBF, number one ranked junior middleweight contender in the world, the former WBO world champion, Bronco McCoy. And his opponent across the ring, playing out of the red corner, wearing blue trimmed with black and silver. He officially weighs 153 and three quarter pounds, and brings a professional record of 43 victories, including 25 knockouts with only three losses. From St. Petersburg, Florida, presenting the reigning, defending IBF Junior Middleweight Champion of the World, Winky Okay, gentlemen, we met in the locker room. We talked about the rules. We talked about keeping our head up. We talked about watching the rabbit punching, keeping the punches up. Cubs are in a great place. Looks good. Your suits are good. You guys ready to go to work? Let's get busy. 40 years ago, the last championship fight held here in Portland between Denny Moyer of Portland and Joey Giambra of Buffalo was for the first junior middleweight title. So coincidentally, at that same weight of 154 pounds, here comes the first idol fight in Portland in 40 years. Fight fans best remember Winky Wright for his near miss against Fernando Vargas in 1999, a fight in which Vargas had to mount a big effort in rounds 11 and 12 to secure a close decision over Wright. Some ringside observers felt Winky had won it. He hopes that Vargas wins next week against De La Hoya because Fernando has openly said, if I win it, I'll give Winky another chance. I'd like to get all three title belts in my possession. De La Hoya has never talked about fighting Winky Wright. And that fight, Jim, was just down the road in Lincoln City, Oregon. Making Wright probably the only title in the sport to have twice fought in the state of Oregon. What do you mean, probably? <laughs> McCart's job is to stop Wright's jab, which dominated the first two fights, and somehow get inside and do damage. Well, the worst nightmare for a southpaw is, an, is fighting another southpaw. Believe me, it's not easy for either guy tonight. They're accustomed to being on the wrong side of a, a traditional fighter. Of course, in, in 24 rounds against each other, George, they've, they've developed familiarity with each other's styles that could make this a more fluid fight. You would think they would be familiar, but they aren't. They don't like fighting southpaw. They have a whole life of fighting the guys on the opposite side. Well, the jab here, if you can establish one, will make the difference. And both fighters working here in the first round to try to establish their jab. Winky was the more active fighter in the first minute. McCart has come back at him somewhat in minute two. Been a good active first round, and there you see Bronco trying to get low to the body. That's part of what he'll need to do to beat Winky Wright. Hard shot by Wright. Momentarily knocks McCart off balance. Winky says that he's become a harder puncher in the past few years realizing that he needs to create excitement among fight fans and that power punching is what does it. Come up, come up. What's the good about it? Let's see, we got something? Uh, Headbutt. We got something? Okay, let's get no it. blood. Let's go. Here we go, right here. An early piece of good fortune for Wright. What's good about both fighters, they're circling one another. No one is going straight back or straight forward. The fight is a circle. Ten seconds. That's what you like to see professional fighters do. He do. Two pretty, pretty, pretty slick pros that know how to fight, George. Okay, yes. Yeah. Three. 
Two hit, but no. I see that. Let me take a look. There ain't even a mark there. Don't worry about mark. it. Not even red. Breathe. Breathe. Wink. When you're catching his jab, counter with yours. Counter with yours. And every now and then come back with the left hand, too. Okay. And don't stand still. Thank you, bud. Good work. Keep that jab active. Keep that jab active. You just and hook that man. You don't keep his hands up there. Hook him in and wait. A headbutt that could have ended this fight, but no damage. Yes, get him up. Bronco McCart's corner asking him to hook off of the jab. McCart needs to land more punches to make his attack a fit by CompuBox numbers in round one. He landed only six out of 45. Winky Wright, 15 out of 39 for a much higher percentage. 84 of their 96 total punches in the round were jabs. So it's been a jabbing contest so far, and that's the way round two begins as well. Now McCart tries to hook off the jab, as his corner asked him to do. Sometimes your trainer's got to tell you to throw these shots. You're never going to see an open with a good defensive fighter like uh, Winky Wright. You just got to throw the punch anyway. I'm not sure where Winky Wright is shaking his head about. He caught three clean punches. Yeah, look out of there. That's when they shake their heads. Good job, two hands. Watch those heads. Watch those heads. Watch those heads. Tells McCart to watch his head and then pops him twice with the jab. You know, both fighters are pretty skilled defenders. When Winky Wright fought Vargas, he had the reputation of being a cute southpaw. He changed his style for that fight and has fought in this more aggressive boxer puncher style since that time. So look out, come on. Can, he, can he step it up look another out, level push. to attract a big fight? That's a good point. His seventh round TKO of Jason Papillon in Miami on the undercard of Roy Jones, Glenn Kelly, looked like the kind of fight plan that Fernando Vargas might have put together. Boxing early and then slugging away to knock Papillon out of there. Neither fighter has made the mistake of letting their back touch the ropes yet, which is good strategy. That jab is just really picking on uh, Winky Wright and putting out on the excellent left jab, and it's just taking his toes from the later. Right jab. Right jab. <laughs> he is a natural right-hander fighting southpaw, like as Michael Moore did. Oscar De La Hoya does, a natural, a natural right-hander, or a natural southpaw who fights conventional. It puts the stronger hand in front, is the bottom line. Well, that jab yeah, he has really is taking his toe. Right? Winky targeting the jab, changing speeds on the jab. Ten seconds. And McCart trying to give as good as he's getting. Two excellent rounds to start the fight. Thursday, September 12th, catch the regular season premiere of Inside the NFL. Join us for a brand new season with the best new team in the league. And Bob Costas and former All-Pro wide receiver Chris Carter join mainstays Chris Collinsworth, Dan Marino, and Wanda Sykes on the show The Pros Watch. We'll bring you exclusive highlights from opening week as well as giving you the first in-depth look at next week's game. Now in its 26th season, Inside the NFL premieres each Thursday night at 8 p.m. right here on HBO. You don't keep his hands up there. Keep throwing them punches. Get inside. Don't let those just do nothing. Hit that body. You understand? Good work. Come on, champ. Come on, champ. Come on, champ. You even, know, even though he's blocking, good. even though he, even though you're blocking everything, Mopies, come Mopies, back, Mopies. come back, come right back, come right back. Winky Wright, excuse me, Bronco McCart was offered fifteen thousand dollars to wear a casino tattoo on his back 
and rejected it, even though he's getting only $75,000 for this fight because he said it would be a bad example for the Sunday schoolers who teaches. And even though he was an outspoken critic of ESPN's policy against allowing fighters to wear such markings on their backs during fights, McCart was the one who said, hey, wait a minute, why is it the fighters who are always criticized for trying to make a few extra dollars? So he stuck up against ESPN for the policy, yet declined to wear the advertising here. I agree with ESPN's policy. I agree with McCart that it's tough on fighters. Dabs in round two, right landed 15 out of 50, McCart 6 out of 37. So numerically, according to CompuBox, George Wright is winning the dabbing contest. Oh, he's winning the fight, period, with the right jab. And that's why McCart better just stop boxing him and start fighting. This is the 27th round. If a guy is not boxing you, you got to start fighting. That's all there is to it. You know, it's, it's, it's a tough pill for McCart to swallow because McCart's a good boxer. He's probably just not quite as good enough to beat Winky Wright. When you want to establish yourself, you just got to go for it sometimes. Break the mold and fight. You've been trained your whole life to box, as Franco has. It's tough, isn't it, George? Yeah, go in there. Hard to change both. Yeah, but but Winky Wright did. Now you see the circle is broken. McCart is starting to go straight back occasionally in his back and hitting the rope. Good left hand shot upstairs oh, okay, by McCart. No, 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 no. He gets one into okay, the body. Let's see, guys. Right here, break. Okay, step back, step back, step back. Okay, right here. What's that? But Winky Wright is starting to be able to pick his shots. Body here, right hook upstairs, left cross from time to time. As Wright adds more and more wrinkles to his attack. I'm a guard, winging shots as he tries to step up the aggression a little bit. That's what George Foreman recommends. And Wright comes right back. Stop. 